and take a seat. There's more than one way of running a consultation for patients with back pain. You can use tools such as Start Back uh, within, easily within a 10 minute consultation and that helps you as a clinician to um, identify those patients who are at higher risk of developing longer term problems with their back and also identify groups of patients who, who are, are likely to get better without very much input from healthcare professionals. Okay, so I've um, taken a, a good look at your back and um, you can give me a lot of information about the, the back pain. What would really be helpful for me is, is if you're able to fill in this very short questionnaire which just helps me to understand specifically about how you, you've been feeling about the back pain over the last two weeks. Is yes, that okay? okay. Alright. Yes. Just take your minute or so and I'll just type some stuff in your notes whilst you're doing that. Okay, That's okay. thank you. Thanks. So the Start Back tool can classify patients into low, medium or high risk groups and that means low, medium or high risk of developing a long term problem with their back. The patients who are identified as, as being at low risk, you can have the confidence to manage those patients in primary care with usual advice around analgesia and activity. Patients who are at medium or high risk of developing a long term problem should be referred on to physiotherapy where those barriers to their improvement can be addressed. Sometimes GPs feel that, that the idea of running another questionnaire within a consultation when you're already under time pressure is, is problematic, but Start Back can be deployed really in, in around about a minute in a consultation and that time can be used just to catch up on your notes whilst, whilst the patient's filling in the questionnaire. Okay, good. So. Uh, the information from the questionnaire and, and, and from taking the history, that uh, we put you in a, in a low risk category for your, for your back pain. Could you explain that to me? Yeah, sure. Um, what low risk means is, is, is low risk of, of developing a, a long term problem with, with the back pain. Um, it doesn't mean you're in low levels of pain, because I can obviously see that, that you are in quite a bit of pain. It means that the outlook for you is really good, uh, and we would expect this back pain to, to settle down over, over the next couple of weeks. So for patients uh, identified as, as low risk from the Start Back questionnaire, you can, uh, it's important to acknowledge that they may be in quite a lot of pain, but actually the outlook for them is, is good and you can be confident to advise analgesia and, and, and activity for these patients. Those at medium and high risk need a slightly different approach and you should start early looking at the barriers that are stopping them improving with their back pain and starting to address those barriers early. Obviously that's good to hear, um, but is there anything I can be doing to help myself? Yeah, sure. So um, we'd say to, to keep um, to keep moving as much as possible, um, using painkillers uh, to, to help get on top of the pain, so you're able to to, to, to keep moving as as normally as possible. Well, I have been resting in bed. Is that the wrong thing to do? Uh, what we know is if if you if you rest up with the back pain, you end up with with stiff muscles and weak muscles in the back, and that can actually end up with the with the pain lasting a longer period of time. Okay, what about painkillers? Uh, what have you been using up to now? Just a couple of paracetamol, but it hasn't been much help really. Okay, so I think the, the paracetamol are a good first step uh, with, with back pain. So we would suggest using two paracetamol every four to six hours and taking them regularly so you're not waiting for the pain to get a lot worse before you take your next dose. Um, then there are, there are other options we could use to add in on top of the paracetamol if that's not holding the pain. So the message with, with back pain is, is to keep moving as much as possible. That can seem counterintuitive to many patients because when, when they start moving the back can hurt more. But what I, the message I try to give patients is that, that hurt doesn't mean harm. So the pain that they get when they're moving around doesn't mean that they're doing more damage to the back. Often patients who are at high risk of developing longer term problems with their back are very fearful of movement and the pain that comes with it. And so they need lots of reassurance and advice that, that the pain they experience is, is normal and it's not causing, it won't cause them more problems with the back and that movement is, is, is good for our backs. Similarly with, with analgesia many patients feel that, that taking painkillers may mask something more serious going on in the back and again the, the message that needs to come across is, is that taking painkillers actually manages, manages the pain better and so that people are able to return to normal activities more quickly. What about work? 
can you just remind me what, what line of work you're in? Yes, I'm a classroom assistant. And what sort of things does that involve doing? Oh, varied things, from running after the children to just doing paperwork. OK. And so if we were able to get the pain a bit better controlled, what kind of activities would you be able to do, do you think? Well, I work? could certainly do the paperwork. OK. Um, what I'd suggest is, is, is we do something called a fit note, and that's a way for me to communicate with your employer. And um, what I would put on there is that for the next two weeks, um, you couldn't possibly do uh, light duties and or admin work uh, and then return to your normal activities as the, as the pain improves. Would that, would that be okay? It's important to start conversations around work early on when you're consulting with patients with back pain. We know that there's a window of opportunity uh, where you can help people get back back to the workplace and that the longer people are off work the, the less likely they are to, to return to work. So I try to focus on, on, on the things that people are able to do at work rather than the things that they're not able to do and to, for that you really need to get an understanding about the kind of activities pe people do in, in their workplace. Managing return to work is challenging for, for employers as well as employees and some employers are reluctant to take people back who, who, are, who are not fully fit or fully recovered from, from their episode of back pain. But we know that really you don't have to be 100% pain free to safely return to, to the workplace. So using tools like FitNotes can be really helpful to, to open those channels of communication between you as a healthcare professional, the employee and the employer and facilitate that person's safe return to work early on. Um, I had been thinking about an x-ray. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. And um, X-rays and scans won't tell us a great deal more about the cause of your pain. Um, they, they can be very helpful if, if in, in back pain if, if, there's, if the nerves in the back are affected. But we know with the kind of back pain that you've got, which is basically um, around, around the lower back, that the X-rays and scans won't, won't give us a great deal more information as to the cause of your pain. Many patients with back pain will come to their consultation thinking that they need an x-ray or a scan and it's important to have those conversations otherwise patients will, will leave the consultation with some questions unanswered. Unless there's uh, suspicion of red flag pathology, x-rays and MRIs aren't indicated for, for back pain and patients can be reassured that, that, that x-rays and MRIs won't add anything extra to the clinical picture or affect their management plan. Yeah, that's been really helpful. Um, I just wanted to say, if, if things don't settle down, what shall I do then? If over the next two weeks the, you find your pain is getting worse, and it's um, even with the painkillers that you're using, uh, or if the pain is going on for longer than the next two, two weeks and it doesn't feel like it's getting better, then, then come back and see me. And what we would do is make another assessment of, of, of your back and then decide the best course of action from there. Okay, well, in, thanks very much. No problem. In the meantime, what I'd suggest is, is take um, some information uh, away with you. This, this has got some information about the back pain, but also some simple exercises that you can be doing almost as first aid for your back over the next couple of weeks. I see. Is that all right? Yes, thank you. There you go. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. thanks a lot. Bye thank now. you. Patients should leave a consultation with a clear plan that should include ma management of their pain, physical activity, what to do if, if things get worse or don't get better and um, for patients at medium or high risk information about their onward referral to physiotherapy. All patients should receive uh, information either, either printed or, or with signposted to information on the, on the internet about back pain and what they can do to help themselves.